Welcome to the Smash series on the milking plant. I'm Noldy Rust, and today we're on the Sweeney farm with Dave Sweeney and Josh Wheeler from QCONS. Today, we're gonna to talk about pulsation, how it works, and any troubleshooting issues. Okay, now, Dave, have you got some questions for uh, Josh about pulsation? Yeah, yeah, so I know it's a critical part of actually getting the milk out of the cow, Josh. Yeah. Um, maybe just can you talk us through the functions of how a pulsator works and I guess at the end how do we actually identify if pulsation isn't happening correctly. Cool, okay. That's good. So um, basically pulsation is basically simulating the calf suckling the cow, okay. So you've got a, you've got a liner here, normally it would have a shell on the outside and all this pulsator is doing here is making a decision to take air from under vacuum here, meaning uh, at the vacuum level, or it's taking atmospheric air through the back. So basically all we're doing is changing the pressure between the, the liner and the shell, if the shell was there, okay? So we've always got vacuum in the middle. When we have vacuum on the outside between the liner and the shell, the liner is open, okay? When, we have, when, we, when the pulsator allows atmospheric air in, so the atmospheric air will come into the chamber, and then the vacuum on the middle will pull it closed. Okay, so that's basically allowing the liner to open and close. And that typically happens between 55 and 60 times a minute, just simulating the speed that the calf suckles. So we have pulsation uh, pulses per minute of 55, 60 pulses per minute. So the other part of pulsation is the ratio. So the percentage of time it is milking for versus the percentage of time it is resting for. And that sets the speed of milk. So this plant no doubt is set up at 60-40, so 60% of the time it is milking, 40% of the time it's resting. If we increase the ratio to 65, 35, then basically we'll milk the cows 8% quicker. If we increase it to 70, 30, we'll milk another 8% quicker. So as we increase the pulsation ratio, we can increase the speed they milk. We only really use the increased pulsation ratios in situations like this farm, where we've got automatic cup removers. So if we increase the speed of the pulsation, then the automatic cup remover will activate earlier, and then we won't, no chance of over, over milking them, or in situations where we've got a lot of milk. So if we're in a really small dairy, milking really high producing cows, and we're waiting for a lot of cows, we'll shift it. If we're doing a max T milking procedure, we, we can shift pulsation. If we're a once a day milking farm, because we've already limited the amount of time the cow milks for, we've got the opportunity to milk at higher pulsation ratios. That's the key message. Just a quick question here, so, so there's no harm in speeding it up, providing you don't overmilk. Is that yeah, right? No the harm. The overmilking is the only issue. Is that right? Yeah, the overmilking is the only okay. issue, really. And I guess a lead on to that with the vacuum pressure as well. Yep. How is that influencing this too, and how can that be good and bad? I suppose if if, if you've got a high level. vacuum level and then you end up milking at a higher pulsation ratio and then overmilking, you will end up causing teeth right. damage. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But if you've, got, if you've got a system where you're going to end milking earlier or you're already doing a, a reduce the amount of milkings through once a day or three and two, yeah. then you've got a hell of a lot of milk to harvest sometimes, especially mm. a once a day farm. You've got 24 hours of milk to harvest, mm. so the milking machine will be very slow. So you've got the opportunity to speed that up to speed up your milkings. Yeah. So we've been doing quite a bit of that. There's a tech note out by Dairy NZ that you should be able to track down that talks about how you have to set your pulsators up if you run them at higher ratios. The other important thing I suppose is what I talked about there was the ratio, the amount of time it's open. The other thing, the pulses per minute, the amount of times it opens doesn't have an impact on speed really, very minimal. So you just normally leave that the same. The other thing people will notice is uh, if we look at this pulsator here, we've got two pulse tubes. This one's running two clusters, two pulse tubes running down to the cluster. So this is what we call two by two. So basically two by two pulsation means we have a different cycle on each side of the cow. So well, this one's closed, this one's open, and it's two by two. Then the Irish and some early New Zealand dairy farmers thought it would be cheaper, you know, just using uh, less pulsators, and we developed four by O, which is basically where they all do the same cycle on the cow. There's been a lot of research to compare the two. There's no real difference in mastitis, milk out. The only slight difference sometimes is there's a little bit more cup slip when they're doing the, the four by O, all doing the same cycle, but not always the case. Question about uh, servicing these pulsators, getting them checked. Do we yep. have to do that annually or? Mm. Yeah, so you should be getting them tested annually. These are the key things that hang on to the cow. The critical test in this is to make sure they're 
operating at the right pulses per minute, the right ratio. And the real important thing is the D phase, so the rest phase. So when you get a machine test, they'll give you a, the percentage of rest phase, D phase, and they'll, yeah. they'll put how many pulsators. Basically, what we've been doing is anything that doesn't have a rest phase for longer than 15% will get crossed and needs to be fixed. Normally it's the kits inside. But basically when you operate at the higher pulsation ratios, you want the D phase to be greater than 20%. So when we operate at higher pulsation ratios, we kind of get the rest phase. All the research tells us is as long as you've got a greater than 20% rest phase, then you're going to get, or a squeeze phase, you're going to get no increased risk of mastitis is the key message. So is there anything if we, like if when we're milking and we're, we're obviously not doing that test, is yep. there anything we can um, look out for or listen to that's telling us our pulsation isn't working properly? Yeah, so the key thing is what the cow's telling you. So you're looking at the cow, I mean if the pulsation's not not milking or in the, in the, in the closed position the whole time or it's slipping, you'll see potentially slipping, you'll see unmilked quarters. The other time you see if it's fully open all the time and not, not having a squeeze phase, you'll see a purpling of the teat, swelling of the teat, and also yeah. an unclean or not fully milked out. So you'll yeah. see that, the cow will tell you that the pulsators haven't been working. <laughs>